So thinking through, you can expect blood work for both partners, yep. ultrasound for female partner, and semen analysis. Kind of as the preliminary, mm -hmm. this is the information that you need. And you might be surprised that I've seen patients for second opinions who maybe didn't have a semen analysis That's done, right. right? That's right. And so That's right. surprise on egg retrieval day if there's, there's no sperm. No sperm. Mm -hmm. That's not a position that you want to find yourself no. in. No. Absolutely not. So that stuff usually takes, let's say, roughly a month. Maybe some of it can take a shorter, depending on right. if you had some done or sure. different variables. Sure. But let's say it takes you about a month time frame to gather the data you need to get check off those boxes. Totally. How do you want to kind of walk somebody through what it might look like if you're going through monitoring, kind of what to expect in the IVF process? So I think, you know, it depends on how you define a cycle. So when I talk to patients, you know, I break it down into two things, right? So an IVF cycle, what does that mean? That means from the day you're starting your stimulation medications mm -hmm. till the day we're finding out how many normal embryos you have. That is about six weeks, okay? You're not doing stuff for yep. the whole six weeks. But that process from the time you're injecting yourself to the time you're getting an answer about your embryos, that's about a six week process. Break that down further, okay? Stimulation medications, that's roughly two weeks, okay? From the time you start your medications till the time we're having an egg retrieval, most folks, 95% of folks are going to be at that egg retrieval within two weeks right? Then there's the portion that happens in the lab. We have to fertilize the egg. We have to culture the embryo out mm -hmm. to the blastocyst stage. We have to biopsy the embryo. We have to send the cells away. So that's the rest of the six weeks. It's the stuff that's happening in the lab, and it's the asking the embryo whether they're chromosomally normal. So your portion, the the you know, active portion. Yeah, yeah, I'm would, coming in, I'm giving that, shots. The monitoring, that's two weeks, but the cycle is six weeks. And I think that that's where some people, you know, well, you told me two weeks of medication, mm -hmm. but the cycle is six weeks in total because it's not over in my mind until you have a result or an answer. Right. Right. IVF, in vitro fertilization for most clinics and especially at our clinic, we're really talking about the creation of embryos in this time frame and the testing of them. That's correct. We are separating out IVF cycles and and embryo transfer Correct. cycles to be FET, frozen embryo transfer cycles. Right. And I exactly that. So when I talk to people about a frozen embryo transfer, I say from the time you're starting your medication till the time you're getting a result. Because that's the outcome. <laughs> that's the outcome, pregnant or not pregnant. That is roughly six weeks as well. So then when we start talking to people about the total time commitment, mm -hmm. I don't know how many of these you're going to need and how many of these you're going to need, but the building blocks are six weeks apiece. So if you want multiple children, we're going to have to do that first building block a few times. Multiply that out by six weeks. It might be a year. Some of my patients, right. you know, that want three children, they're, you know, less young, and it's going to take us a year of cycles to get to that place. So in the best case scenario, we're typically looking at, let's say, a month of lead-in mm -hmm. with testing, and then three months. If you happen to be somebody who needs one, one of cycle these of and IVF one and of these, pregnant on your first <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. But as we've said before, right, success rates for a single embryo transfer, let's say they're 65% for genetically normal embryo. That means many people need more than one. Yeah. Even if everything's perfectly normal, that's right. doesn't mean anything's wrong. That's right. And the decision on needing more than one IVF cycle, it, there may not be anything wrong with your cycle. You may make embryos. A lot of that is family planning to the point of your doctor should be asking, or if they do not, you should try to bring up your family plan. That's right. Because if you're 38, you want more than one child, it is unlikely that you're going to get out of that with one egg retrieval and have enough genetically normal embryos for your entire family. That is highly improbable at the age of 38 years young. That's correct. And so that's a question at Four Fertility that we ask people right off the bat. You come into a consultation with us, the first question out of both of our mouths is going to be, so tell me about your ideal family. Mm -hmm. In your dream world, how many children do you envision in your family? And the less young you are, and the less follicles you have to give me, the more building blocks we're going to have to do. It doesn't mean we can't get there, but it's going to take a little bit more doing. And I think that that's an important question because if you know this, if you're perfect, you're not going to be happy with just one child. You really want to have more than one child. Maybe your sibling's important to you. You are less young. 
we know that if you don't make those embryos now, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do this again. Mm -hmm. Now more time has passed. Low, you have fewer follicles. You have more of them that are genetically abnormal. It's not that it's always impossible. That's right. But you're going to have to invest a lot more time, money, physical, the emotional energy to get that outcome then than what you could get right now. And that's exactly what I talk to people about. I'm an entrepreneur, as you know, and I talk to people about return on investment. Okay. So can I get a normal genetically chromosomally normal embryo from a patient at 42? I can. Is that probably going to happen in one cycle? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So the amount of resources, meaning financial, emotional, psychological, that you're going to invest in the technology, you're going to invest fewer of those the younger you are. Mm -hmm. So that is the rationale behind pursuing embryo banking against a family plan versus have a baby now, come back in a couple of years and ask Dr. Skiller for a miracle at that point. I think another misconception right here is that people think, I still don't think I'll need multiple cycles because I have 10 eggs. And there's this attrition that oh. is happening that a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. 10 eggs is not going to be 10 embryos to transfer. That's right. And everybody gets annoyed because I go around going like The this. funnel. The funnel, yes. And so I do this to all of my patients all of the time, and it, it does irritate people. But what's at the top? How many follicles do I have and what is my age? What's at the bottom? The number of chromosomally normal embryos. So if my triangle looks like this, it's highly unlikely that I'm going to have two babies worth of embryos from this cycle. Mm -hmm. If I'm very young and my triangle looks like this, I'm more that, probable. More probable, exactly. And part of this is expectations because one thing we're going to talk <laughs> about a little bit later in the episode is what happens if you maybe don't get any embryos yeah. and what needs to happen mm -hmm. next. And I'll tell patients, Sometimes the cycle is absolutely perfect. It's just part of the math, right? How many follicles you had and your age, how things fell through the funnel. Mm -hmm. It was actually the most expected outcome. We just need more so that our funnel can get wider that's at the exactly top right. so that we can find that right embryo. That's exactly right. And that's exactly what it is, is that, you know, the less young you are, the more eggs I need to get you to the same goal. And because I can't get more follicles on a per cycle basis than what you have to give me, if you have 10 antral follicles, 10's our very best day. The only way I can make that 20 is if we do another cycle after that. That's the only way that the funnel can get bigger, the input to be more, the output to be more. So if this is important, because we've hit on protocols a couple times, right? The point of a protocol in my mind is to try to get as many mature eggs as we can get for you. That's right. Right? Now, that's going to be a personalized number, as that's you've already right. hit on, based on AMH, AFC, based on age. There's some variables that you don't control at all That's right. when it comes to this. But there are some things when it comes to your protocol, and it's not even that everybody is going to respond the same to the same no. protocol. They're not. Mm -mm. There's some selection at the end and beginning. I would say we're going to choose based on the data what should work That's most right. of the time in patients like you. But then there's also a comp component of saying maybe that could be better, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes that is lacking a little bit at certain places. But before we maybe kind of go through what you should think about if you're doing a repeat cycle, what does that mean, protocol? What is a protocol and what are the differences? People tend to think that we have this magic this magic repository of all of these medications, but really it's pretty simple. What we're doing is controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. So let's start with the controlled part, all right? So you have your pituitary that talks to your ovary, all right? And so if we allow that communication to continue, we have a variable that we cannot control. Right. So part of the controlled portion is to cut off the communication in some ways between the pituitary and the ovary. Mm -hmm. I don't want your pituitary picking one egg right. because that's the natural. That's the You're natural. You're not supposed to have a litter. That's right. And so if somebody in nature, they have 10 antral follicles, their pituitary is starting the cycle. One, you know, follicle or one egg is going to ovulate. Nine are going to die. Our goal is to get as much of the cohort going together as we can. So for me to be able to do that, for us to be able to do that, we have to stop the pituitary from the normal dialogue. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways of doing that. Birth control pills, that's one way. Estrogen priming, that's another way. Um, you know, down-regulated cycles antagonist cycles, and these are all a bunch of keywords, but at the end of the day, the, the point is the same. We want to disrupt that normal communication mm -hmm. so that we can do a controlled hyperstimulation of the ovary. So we're naming protocols mm -hmm. based off essentially the suppression That's or whatever's right. disrupting. That's That's exactly right. Because the stimulation is relatively the, similar, mm -hmm. right? We're using FSH and plus minus some LH, That's depending right. on your scenario. But we're trying to 
give more signal than the pituitary gland would normally send to get the eggs to grow. And so that's not that different cycle to cycle. That's, the dosing is different, but the medications are essentially the same. <laughs>